I'm very excited. I have a little bit of background in music, and by little bit, I mean like the smallest amount. Like I took music lessons for like six weeks. All right, let's get into music theory. Here we go. Let's All right, so sharps. <laughs> sharps are the best. There we go. And yeah. most are used. I tend to use sharps, except when you want it to be sad, you use flats. Done. Knowledge. Yeah. That was great. There that, you thank go. You so Pleasure much for chatting with you. <laughs> Hey everybody, I'm Brian Mitchell. Start over, because I was, hey. Hey guys. Hey guys. Hey guys. <laughs> Folks, we're here today to highlight one of the largest components in the process of making television, film, video games, and entertainment as a whole. The composition of music and scores. The Walking Dead has one of the most iconic television theme songs to date. It goes something like this. You know, you know how it goes, right? Batman. Nope. To be clear, we are just scratching the surface of this highly accomplished composer's work. He also happened to compose a ton of Battlestar Galactica. Also, some Agents of Shield, which is like this. You're off a little. Am I? <laughs> Why don't we let the man himself do the talking? Let's check out Sam's interview with none other than Bear McCreary. Hey guys, we're sitting down right now with Mr. Bear McCreary, composer for The Walking Dead and many other great properties. How you doing? Good, thanks for having me here. Well, uh, to kick it off, <laughs> what got you started in composing for movies and TV shows? My interest in composing for movies and TV shows goes back to, I think, age five. Wow. Um, it, it, it's pretty much all I ever wanted to do, but I, I always love movies, I always love music, and when I was about five years old, I saw movies like Back to the Future, and then when I was a little older, I saw, like, I remember Beetlejuice and Empire Strikes Back. These movies were really, like, making a huge impression on me. And I used to, uh, I had this little Fisher Price tape recorder, and I would sneak it into the movie theater and I'd like hold it up, like John Cusack style, you know, holding it up to record <laughs> the music so I could go home and listen to the music from these movies. Then I discovered there's these things called soundtracks, where you could actually just listen to the music without all that annoying dialogue in a way. So I became this huge soundtrack fan. I was collecting all through my youth. And probably around the time I was eight or nine, I, I had been taking piano lessons for a long time, and I, I really wanted to to try to start writing music myself. So from that point on, it was kind of a slippery slope and here we are. Here we are. Yeah. That's amazing. Uh, now you named a few movies, awesome A plus A1 movies that have inspired you, but what genre do you feel or genres uh, help you inspire like, or help create your themes? I, I think almost by a secondary coincidence, the genres that have always inspired me are sci-fi, fantasy, horror. Um, I think it's because those genres tend to rely on music to help create other worlds. The music has to do more heavy lifting than normal to make this whole thing that you're seeing believable. So I, I think there's a reason that so many of our favorite scores tend to come from those genres. Um, that's not to say that um, genres of story that take place in a more recognizable world don't have great music. Uh, probably if I had to pick my favorite film score, it would be To Kill a Mockingbird by Elmer Bernstein. <laughs> just because of its flawless construction and its timeless quality. Um, that score could be written today and you wouldn't blink. You would just think it's beautiful. Um, the fact that it's from 1960, I mean, that's astonishing. Other scores that are sort of in that realm for me, um, Conan the Barbarian by Basil Polidorus. <laughs> it's so beautiful and so powerful. Very cool. Now, when you approach a new project, movie, TV show, video game, uh, do you find yourself sitting down with the creative director or the director and starting to map out the piece first? Or do you usually wait to see what kind of look they're going for and then kind of 
create a piece after that. So sometimes starting early, you can make certain decisions uh, that are helpful. For example, um, The Walking Dead. I was hired very early. I was hired before Andy Lincoln. I was hired before any of the cast. Wow. And so I think it was, it, I met with Gail and Frank, um, and I was brought on, and there was nothing to look at. There was just a script. Um, and I read all the comics at that point. So <laughs> I kind of knew where we were going. Kind of helped. It, it, it helped, and, and maybe it didn't. I don't know. It's like, because I came into it going, oh my God, I'm thinking about the governor already, and we're just talking about the first <laughs> episode, you know? Um, but I got to spend a few months thinking about the tone and the location. We're in Georgia. We are, you know, dealing with undead people. So what would that mean for musical instruments? And got some wacky ideas of like taking bluegrass and folk instruments and making the zombie versions of them. So like literally breaking auto harps and dulcimers and detuning banjos and running them through all these processors to like make them the undead version of these instruments that are directly tied to that region. That was cool, and it and it really paid off. Like that ended up, uh, especially the first two seasons, being a big part of the sound. But ultimately, I I didn't get a sense of what the tone of The Walking Dead would be until Frank showed me that first episode, and then it's like kicks you in the face. It's so um, its identity is so strong, and then you go, oh, this is what it needs to take it to the finish. What's your favorite instrument that you've got to kind of mess with and use in a score? Um, I'm partial to a weirdo instrument called the hurdy gurdy. <laughs> which I actually play myself, so I'm really? <laughs> partial toward it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's this weird instrument with a crank, and, um, and it sounds like a bagpipe from hell. Um, I actually used it, I, I used it a lot in a show called Black Sails. Um, I used it in The Walking Dead in very specific places in the second season when Shane is starting to go a little crazy. It was like the hurdy-gurdy string was like Shane's sanity. You know what I mean? And um, it was cool because it because it because of the wheel on it and this crank, it it feels like a violin, but it it behaves in a way that a violin can't. So it's it's just weird. I I I, I I've used it more than I should admit. I use it a <laughs> lot, uh, but it was a lot of fun. Very cool. If you ever have a Hollywood Bowl show and you're just doing the hurdy-gurdy, I'd love to come. Dude, it'll be amazing. I'm very I'm excited. Shred that shit. <laughs> Uh, if you had to guess, now this might be a little hard because The Walking Dead's been on for a little while. Uh, mm. How many original pieces of music do you think you've made for The Walking Dead thus far? You know, when I was putting together the soundtrack album for The Walking Dead, mm. I grabbed my folder of finished mixes and I thought, let's just pull it into iTunes, in, into a playlist and see how long it is, see how many hours. And it didn't come out in hours, it came out in days. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it was 1.8 days. So we're talking 40 hours, give or take, of music. Guys, if you enjoyed that, make sure you check out the full interview by becoming an insider and going to skybound.com today. There's a ton of cool tidbits and insight into the world of composing and Bear's life that we just didn't get into here. Subscribe to our channel, like and comment on the video below. We will see you all next week. Hurdy-gird, uh, sign us off.